Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 83 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to talk about camera profiles. Now, if you mess around with any modern digital camera today and you go through the menu system, you'll probably find something in there that it might be called camera profiles. It might be called camera simulations or scene, scene modes or, you know, uh, film simulation modes, something like that. And what those usually have, if you look through, you'll you usually have something that says portrait, you'll have something that says landscape, you'll have something that says vivid, and maybe some others. And what that means is if you were shooting JPEG and you pick a setting, let's say for the sake of argument, you pick portrait. You're shooting a portrait JPEG. What's going to happen is your camera is going to optimize the color interpretation, the color saturation, the contrast, and the sharpness of the image for a portrait file or for a portrait picture. So you're kind of optimizing your camera for the exact uh, type of image you're going to be taking. It could be, like I said, a portrait, a landscape, whatever. Well, if you shoot raw, what you'll find is any of those choices that are available in your camera will be available in post-production and you could pick one in Lightroom. Now, this image here was taken with a Nikon D800E. It's a RAW file. If you go over here in the Develop module in the Camera Calibration tab and you look right here, it says Profile. You'll see right now this drop-down says Adobe Standard. But if I click on it, there's a lot of choices. Camera Landscape, Neutral, Portrait, Standard, and Vivid. In the menu system of my Nikon D800E, those are actual choices I could pick to take this image and it will bake it into a JPEG file if I was taking JPEGs. But luckily, I shot RAW and I could pick one now. So I could pick Landscape. And you can see how it gives a totally different look to the image. Neutral, Portrait, and so on, Standard, and then Vivid. So you could really kind of give your image a different look, be it a landscape, a portrait, whatever by coming down here in camera calibration and picking it from this profile. Now I alluded that this is kind of manufacturer specific. Every manufacturer calls it something differently and they have different choices. And it even could be model specific to the camera. Now in this case, this was a Nikon D800E. It's about five years old, I guess. This is a D7000 Nikon, maybe six, seven years old, and it has the same choices. So the same exact thing. This is a Nikon D500, which is less than a year old. And if you look at the profiles here, we'll see we have flat, that, that's different, and it has neutral. Then it has pretty much, oh, it has monochrome, too, I'm sorry. It has flat and monochrome, those are new. Everything else is the same, I believe. So we actually have a monochrome choice, which wasn't available in those earlier Nikon cameras, but it's available here. Now, here is a Sony, um, I believe this was an A7S II, and you'll see that in this drop-down they have a camera clear, whatever that is, a camera deep, they have landscape, and again, you know, it's specific to Sony, and maybe even specific to an A7S II. So if you have a Sony, you might have a different model Sony, you might have different choices in here. Uh, this is a Fujifilm X-T1. Fujifilm calls them film simulation modes. And what they're actually doing is they're going to simulate a type of Fuji film. So this has a Provia film. Did you ever hear of Fujifilm Provia? How about Velvia? Astia. Astia was a, like a portrait film we used to use. Classic Chrome is Fuji Chrome, uh, uh, a slide film. Pro Negative H, that's like a type of print film. Then we have um, monochrome. And what they have too, which I think is, is pretty cool, is they have a simulation of a monochrome image or a monochrome film with a specific type of color filter. So if you had a film camera with like black and white film in it and you used a yellow filter, you would get this look. If you used a red filter, you would get this look and you used a green filter, you would get that look. So you actually get an idea. Now, one thing I want to warn you is some of these profiles, when you pick them, not all of them, but on some of them, especially some of the monochrome ones, it will 
disable your HSL color in B&W tab totally. Uh, so it, you can't do anything there. Now it doesn't do it on every um, choice, like especially the, the color ones. Well, that's Adobe. A lot of the color ones, you'll still be available. But on some of the black and white ones, I found the HSL color and B&W tab become totally inactive. Um, with It did in the Nikon. See how it's totally inactive. Then we come over here. This was a Fujifilm X100T, and that has the same exact choice as the, the X-T1 has. This is a newer Fujifilm uh, camera. This is an X-Pro2, and this has some newer choices. This is an Acros, which is a black and white simulation, and you can see that this tab is active for that one. We'll go back down here. So we have Acros with a yellow filter, Acros with a red filter, Acros with a green filter. And then we have the Provia, the Velvia, the Estia. Everything else is pretty much the same as it was with the X-T1 and the X-100T. So I just want to kind of make you aware that these are there and to let you know that they're going to be specific to your camera model. So, you know, if, they're, if what you're seeing, your Sony doesn't have what this Sony has, it's because it's specific to your camera model. Also, uh, if you shoot JPEG, you won't get these choices. You won't be able to choose this in post because it's already baked in to your camera. Whatever you chose in camera is going to be baked into your JPEG, and you won't be able to pick it in post. That's another advantage of shooting RAW. You get to choose your profile. Now, a lot of questions I get is when should you pick the profile? Like, should you process everything and then come down here and start picking profiles? To me, that seems kind of odd to do it that way because you're processing this image, let's say, for Adobe Standard Profile and you like it. Then you come down here and you pick like Camera Vivid and it's like maybe too dark or maybe too colorful or you know what I mean? So you might want to come down here and pick a profile early in your processing. So, um, you know, right away maybe. Say, all right, um, I did this landscape. I'm going to right away pick camera landscape, and then I'm going to start doing my processing for a camera landscape. And, um, you know, that I think would be the logical way to do it. Now, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do this. Do it whichever way uh, is comfortable for you. I just wanted to make you guys aware that these are available in the camera calibration tab. And if you shoot raw, you should take advantage of them. What I found for me is I usually on, only use the Adobe standard. I don't mess around too much. But every now and then I get an image and boy, it just doesn't look right. You know, it just doesn't look right. I can't really, I, I like the scene, but the, the colors aren't doing it or something's not right. And I'll come down here and pick a different profile and all of a sudden it works. So... Um, maybe that will be the way you'll use it too. So that's it for this episode. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.